This is the story of Larry, Joe, Balthazar, Juliet, and Mark. Three snakes, two people, and one really nasty virus. Surgeon body disease is a viral infection that it can infect all the organs of the snake. It's basically a disease in which cells throughout the body accumulate large cytoplasmic conclusions, that is big lumps of protein stuck inside the cells. It is a fatal snake disease. It is prevalent in many zoological collections, private collections, um, aquariums, pet stores. It is the bane of existence for a boa constrictor or a python owner. At least for the boas, it tends to show up as respiratory or lung lung type infections. In pythons, it can present itself in what's called stargazing. They get neurological disorders. They might lie on their back, which is not a snake's natural position. They, their head might move unnaturally and, and they stare at the sky. If, if an animal is diagnosed with inclusion body disease, since there is no treatment, um, the animal is either isolated for the rest of its life or euthanized. I um, first met Larry in a pet store in Alaska. I lived in Fairbanks, Alaska for eight years and Larry was the only snake in the pet store. He had no covering. He had nothing to hide in. Snakes love to hide. He was a snakeling, a mere six months old and um, it was love at first sight. Uh, Larry has a virus of unknown origin. I was discussing the situation with Dr. Sanders and he told me of a famous scientist at UCSF. He gave me Dr. DeRisi's name. He had done some correspondence with Dr. DeRisi and of course I immediately looked Dr. DeRisi up and found that he was world renowned. I received a letter in the mail that contained a photograph of a woman with her pet boa constrictor, which is unusual, and a letter that basically described a disease in snakes that have been known for a long time, but the cause remained a mystery. I implore Dr. DeRisi to please use the ViroChip or some other methodology to find out exactly what virus or viruses Larry um, was harboring and to possibly find a cure for him. Mm -hmm. So I came to Joe's lab a couple years ago to work on virus discovery projects and about a year ago uh, Joe mentioned this project to me and explained it and uh, I agreed to work on it. My lab's involved in the study of infectious disease and particularly trying to discover new viruses associated with diseases for which there was an unknown cause. So I called uh, the veterinarian listed on that letter and he actually described that this disease was a really big deal not only for domestic snake owners but also for aquariums and zoos and other major collections have long had a problem with this disease. And so it satisfied all the criteria of an interesting um, disease and we decided to take it on as a project. Juliet was a, a snake that I adopted while in vet school um, back in, in roughly 1992. And she was already a, somewhere between one and three years old at the time. So she was, I believe, 20, 22 years old, and she developed lymphoma. And <clears throat> during her, her decline, ultimately, she died from the lymphoma. But when she did, we did a, a necropsy, which is basically an animal autopsy, and collected tissues for the, the DeRisi lab. And from that, they were able to make a cell culture from her kidneys. So currently the, the cell line that they've been using in infecting and purifying the virus is, is based on my snake Juliet's um, kidneys. So. The, what we did to find the virus was take samples from uh, diseased and healthy snakes and we extracted all of the RNA from these sick and healthy samples and subjected them to our deep sequencing technology. Which really means sequence everything that's in there. Find all the RNA and DNA, all the genetic material that's in a sample and read it. Read it all. Now there's a problem with this approach and the problem has to do with we don't even know what the sequence of the snake is. 
they did not have a normal to be able to um, basic a standard of what something without a virus would look like when their genome sequencing. So they asked if we had a known negative snake. Um, Balthazar, being an educational animal, was never within our collection. So the animal had never been exposed to, um, to any of these snakes. So again, we tested that animal to the best of our abilities and found to be negative for inclusion body disease. So we opted or gave that animal up, not gave him up, but gave his blood for genetic sequencing to allow us to establish a normal. And this allowed us to identify, we think, the causative agent behind this disease. You've probably never heard of an arenavirus, but they're actually very dangerous viruses. Arenaviruses are only known, up to this point, in rodents, and occasionally a rodent can transmit that virus to a human host. It's an accident. We call it a zoonotic infection. And in those cases, the human can come down with encephalitis or some sort of hemorrhagic fever. You know, very often results in a fatality. This virus is in a snake. Is it the case that this is a brand new version of this virus in snakes? Now, there's no evidence that a snake has ever transmitted this disease to a human. No snake owner or veterinarian has come down with hemorrhagic fever from being exposed to a snake with inclusion body disease. However, it is an interesting aspect of this project that there's a reservoir of these arenaviruses, which are only thought to be in rodents, present in reptiles, an uncharacterized place for these guys to potentially evolve and hide out. I'm very, very excited about this. You know, to be able to find the etiological agent, you can then um, replicate the disease. You can learn its pathogenesis. You can also learn um, infectivity, how it's spread. And one of the greatest things is from it, we can then hopefully establish an anti-mortem diagnostic that will allow us to test the animals without having to do biopsies of the organs. And that I think is, is, is going to be very, very helpful during quarantining processes. Because right now, even if we quarantine a snake um, during a certain period of time and do the biopsies, there's always a chance it still could be positive and we've missed it. So hopefully by finding the etiological agent, we'll be able to get a test that is much more um, specific. I am so excited. I actually didn't think in my lifetime I would see any type of resolution to this horrible disease. But it gives hope that there can be vaccines, that there can be treatment, that there can be a possible cure. Um, the fact that the Derisi Lab took an interest with all their equipment and with all their amazing talent is, is a really big deal and we're very fortunate for it.